iPhone 14 Pro Max versus Galaxy S23 Ultra versus Tensor G2 Google Pixel 7 Pro speed test. Now the iPhone is basically the highest price in most areas because the S23 Ultra is often discounted. And then this is the cheapest in the Google Pixel 7 Pro. A16 Bionic, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, and Tensor G2 CPUs, Android 13 on both of these, One UI 5.1, and we do have iOS 16.5.1 over here now because there's three phones i'm gonna go ahead and time this baby with a stopwatch here on this sony device and we're gonna go ahead and see which one does faster i'll speed it up here while we are testing these in three two go and so the iphone 14 pro max completed this test in just 17 seconds so that's pretty darn quick let's see how fast the Galaxy S23 Ultra can do this baby with the one, the one UI 5.1. And it does have the June update now. So let's go ahead and begin this test in three, two, go and see which one can get there first. Now I get a few comments here and there. Oh, nobody boots up their phone. Who cares? Look at, I reboot my phones quite a bit, especially the Android devices to keep them the cache clear. And just kind of, I feel like it just helps boost the performance a little bit. Um, just clearing things out. And sometimes you, you could actually set these up to reboot overnight. And the S23 Ultra in around 21 to 22 seconds finishes the boot up. So the iPhone turns on faster than the S23 Ultra. I think I said S22 Ultra. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and check out the Pixel 7 Pro, which I'm pretty positive will be the fastest to turn on. Go. And I'm assuming the Pixel will be the fastest here even faster than the iPhone. This is one of the fastest booting phones I've seen. There's the G logo and we should be just about in, in just 13 seconds. So the Google Pixel 7 Pro is absolutely the fastest phone to boot up. I will say one thing, it's the slowest phone to go ahead and do an update though. When you're doing software updates, the Pixel 7 Pro is, is ridiculous slow by comparison to iPhone 14 Pro Max and Galaxy S23 Ultra. Now, when it comes to unlocking these phones, all of them are quite fast. The iPhone does utilize Face ID with no fingerprint sensor, although it does have the ability to come up, raise to wake, and then you just swipe in, so pretty reliable. The Galaxy S23 Ultra does have not only a face unlock, which is can bypass the lock screen, making it faster than the iPhone, but it does have the in-display fingerprint sensor. Now, the Pixel 7 Pro also has a really decent fingerprint sensor, definitely improved over the 6 Pro, but I don't find it to be faster than the S23 Ultras. It's still pretty darn good. I would say the face unlock is quicker on the S23 Ultra than all three All three of these phones. It's the fastest here. Um, and reliability wise, the S23 Ultra is probably the king in speed of unlocking. Um, so definitely I would say in biometric speed, the S23 Ultra is the fastest. Now come a little bit closer here. When it comes to the software itself, uh, how smooth it is, generally speaking, they are all very good now. They all have 120 hertz displays. I find the Pixel on its home screens is probably one of the smoother experiences. It just feels that way. Now, when in its app drawer, I feel like it's not quite as fast as on its home screens. I don't know, the animations, they look a little bit different. I think the Samsung looks the smoothest in its app tray. Um, on the home screens, pretty similar to these two. The iPhone overall, I think, is a little bit more consistent than both of these phones and just everyday smooth. But the app library to me, I don't know what it is with the app library. It just doesn't look as smooth as, you know, like the app drawer here or the app drawer here. These just seem like a little bit more 120 hertz in that area. But scrolling through these days, they're all generally about the same in terms of how they perform. They're all super smooth and it's a really good experience. And that's why I said the Pixel 7 Pro is such a good value because it's cheaper by a significant margin than these two. And it does give you a really good similar performance. All right, so here we are at the application test. Everything is closed out for all these phones. Let's begin with calendar here. And I look like the Samsung maybe, we'll go into with the Pixel way behind both Let's go into calculator. 
that was pretty close on all those phones. I think Samsung's animation maybe. We'll go into clock here. And that one looked like maybe the iPhone. Again, this is going to be very tough for me to see. So you can call it as you see it or slow down the video. That one looked like it might have been the iPhone. Let's go out of here. We'll go into Instagram. I think Pixel had that one. We'll go home here to the home page. And we'll go over here to my latest post. No major difference when you're actually in these devices here in application. Let's go into Play Store, App Store, three, two, go. That looked like the Samsung had that. So, so far it's looking like the Samsung is definitely a very, very quick phone. We'll go into Twitter here. Samsung definitely had that, um, but the Pixel was right behind with the iPhone lagging in Twitter. So the iPhone is actually one of the slower phones when it comes to Twitter, Pixel there, then the iPhone, and then the Samsung. Again, when scrolling through, when you're actually in, there's not a ton of a difference here between these phones, but definitely all of them do good. Let's go into Groupon, and you'll see that's the iPhone followed by those two on the right. We'll go into Categories. That might have been the Pixel. We'll hit Things to Do. And that was about even on the Pixel and the Samsung with the iPhone behind. We'll go into Amazon now. And Amazon loading a little prime day on the Samsung, but let's go ahead and uh, reopen that one because it was loading the prime day for the Samsung. I want to make sure we get a, s a correct test here. Three, two, go. And now we're getting prime day over here. So this one's going to be a little bit difficult to test. So how about we just uh, scroll through and see how it looks overall pretty fast. We'll go into Starbucks here on both. And it does look like that might have been the iPhone. We'll go into Best Buy. And when I call these, that doesn't mean I'm correct. I'm just saying what I think I'm seeing. I could be wrong. Again, it's hard to look through the camera, see three different phones and animations in every app. That's, that's kind of hard. So you can see right here, Galaxy S23 Ultra. That's why I'm relying on you guys to tell me, hey, man, Nick, bro, you were wrong on this one. You were definitely wrong on that one. And here's who won. Let's go ahead. And the Samsung just keeps, these phones just keep sliding around. Maybe I should put cases on them next time. We'll go into eBay. And you'll see eBay. Look like the Pixel might have had that. Let's head up out of there. And we'll go into the games now. Dead Trigger 2, 3, 2, go. And you can see that looks like the iPhone might have had that. Let's go to play. 3, 2, go. And all of these phones, iPhone, Samsung, and then Pixel. That's exactly what I kind of expect here in the gaming. I still think the Samsung is the best pick for the gaming department, though. Phone stays cool under heavy load. iPhone and Pixel beat the Samsung here. It stays cool under heavy load, and it does have pretty even performance to these. It's a little bit behind on this test, but bigger screen, you know, smaller punch hole than the Pixel. It's just the most enjoyable when you are doing gaming. So that's that's my pick for gaming. But let's go into Call of Duty here. Three, two, go. And see what we get on all three phones. So it's looking like Samsung in the lead. Again, every time you do this test, it's a little bit off sometimes because this game is always downloading new resources and things. So iPhone looks to be ahead. There's Samsung, and now we have Google. So it's looking like it's going to be iPhone, or it's going to be Samsung. Actually, iPhone had that first. It was just loading this stuff up. iPhone, Samsung, and then Google here with the Call of Duty. So iPhone, man, iPhone always seems to want to win out in gaming. Let's go into Temple Run in terms of just performance. I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's the hardware and software, but I think developers spend a lot of time making the games really good on iPhone too. But the Samsung wins it out there with Temple Run too. All in all, you can enjoy this game on any of these phones, no problem. Let's go into Subway Surfers, three, two, go. See how they perform in this front. And you'll see that's a win to the iPhone, then the Samsung, and then the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Let's go ahead and take it over to Hill Climb 2, three, two, go. 
and see how we do here. And you'll see that the iPhone and Samsung going neck and neck with Samsung maybe a hair quicker and then the Pixel behind. So I'm seeing the Pixel just a little bit behind these other two in a lot of areas so far. Uh, just a lot of applications, just a hair behind on the Pixel. So the Pixel definitely is probably the weakest performer of the three. And you'll see Apple a little bit faster there. Um, these are really going to head to head with the Pixel kind of in third place, I would say, overall on this speed test. Smoothness though, I mean, these are just like a millisecond or two different though. So with that being said, I would probably like to save myself a few hundred dollars, get a Pixel 7 Pro if I was in the market to save some money. But if you want the top of the line, it's probably the Samsung. And if you love Apple, that's also top of the line for Apple and the 14 Pro Max. All right, so here we are at the RAM management. I'm gonna go through these individually because I don't want to uh, make mistakes with that. There's three phones here, so you'll see everything pretty good here for the iPhone. I expect flawless performance there for iPhone. And so far, it's exactly what we are getting. Pretty much flawless performance. Yep, buttery smooth animations as expected. Now, can Samsung pull it off as well on the June update here? Some people are saying this June update has wrecked their S23 Ultra. I just got it today. Oh, that was a little bit, ugh. but <laughs> I'll take it because it's still, it's still working. But just come on, Samsung. Let's get them flawless animations. And then I don't know what else you can say about Apple unless you just love the Apple products because I feel like the S23 Ultra is already faster than the iPhone 14 Pro Max in a lot of areas. And that was pretty darn great except for asphalt. Over here, 12 gigs of RAM. 12 gigs of RAM on the S23 Ultra as well. We'll go to Call of Duty. That was fine. I was just checking it, double checking it. Asphalt's got to load again. Pixel's animations look a little bit uh, more polished, in my opinion, than the Samsung's. That was a little bit wonky right there. See, when you start going fast, I feel like Apple does a better job with handling the fast performance. Now, I know not a lot of people are going to be opening their apps that fast, but at the same time, when you're hopping through or you're doing something on the fly, you might notice a little stutter, and that might remind you that you know, I, I want to see a little bit better animation performance in the future. All right, and the final Geekbench scores are in, and you can see the iPhone, of course, with the win here. Samsung pretty close to the iPhone there with the Pixel far behind both of them. We're going to go ahead and run a 3D Mark benchmark just to kind of see what frame rates we get on each device. I'll be back when they are done. And so our final results are in, and you can see the Samsung with the win here. 36.19 with an average frame rate of 21.70. If you scroll down, it performs better than 86% of all other devices. Over here, the Pro Max next up with 33.62 versus Samsung's 21 FPS. We have a 20 FPS here. Scores better than, let's see, 83% of other devices. So according to this benchmark, the Samsung is the more powerful phone. And over here, the Pixel 7 Pro, 1652 on its overall score. Let me bring that brightness down. 1652 with an average frame rate of only 9.90. So probably the worst in terms of gaming here is the Pixel. Scores better than only 43% of other devices. So the Pixel is not really about, you know, the top level performance. It's more about a smooth experience for the everyday user with some great camera. Um, whereas the Samsung is more of an all out beast. And then the iPhone is a refined beast that kind of doesn't take advantage of its A16 power. So at the end of the day, I would, I would say the king of speed here is the S23 Ultra. This phone has the fastest you know, 3D Mark score. It uh, felt a little faster in the animations than both of their phones. The iPhone is right hard on its heels, though, of the S23 Ultra. Um, and I expect the A17 chip and the iPhone 16 Pro Max or iPhone Ultra, whatever they want to call it this year, to be faster than the S23 Ultra. But for now, the king crown remains to the S23 Ultra with the Pixel definitely easily slotting in at third place. And with the Pixel Fold having the Tensor G2, that phone is likely not any faster than the iPhone or the S23 Ultra as well. So that's gonna wrap it up here for me. Which one would you pick though, out of these three phones to be your next device? Or if not any of these, 
What is your plan on your next device? Let's talk about that down below in the comments. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace. Thank you.